Hello, welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann. Um, today I wanted to go through uh, my February TBR. Um, this is probably not my complete TBR, and I might not even get through this whole pile, but this is the pile um, of books that I want to prioritize um, for February, uh, in large part because it is Black History Month, so this is a selection of nonfiction and fiction by some Black authors. Um, and I will get to this. Um, these are all books that have been on my TBR for a while, and I'm really excited about all of them. So me saying I might not get to all of them in February. It's a short month. They just might extend a little bit into March. So um, we'll just see how it goes. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to start with um, some fiction books, and then I have some nonfiction books at the end. Um, so in fiction, one of my priorities is Akata Witch by um, Nettie Okora 4. And this is uh, a YA um, fantasy novel, um, and it ends up being a magic school novel. Uh, we follow the main character whose name is Sunny. Um, so Sunny lives in Nigeria. She was born in New York City, um, and she is albino. Um, and I think there's some uh, sort of aspect of not being able to fit in. She's very athletically gifted, but since she's albino and has no melanin protection from the sun, um, she can't do athletics um, living in Nigeria. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think there's probably some kind of adolescent coming of age aspect um, to that. And then in the course of the book, she discovers that she actually has a latent magical power. And then I think the magical schooling um, plot probably comes in because then um, she's part of a group of young uh, magic users um, who are learning about their powers and then I think they end up um, kind of chasing down a criminal or something who's also a magic user. So it sounds like there's a lot going on but I've heard really amazing things about um, this author um, which is why I ended up ordering the book. This is actually one I bought because I'd seen um, so many really good things about it. So I'm very excited uh, to read this one. Um, and then I also already got started with, uh, with some fantasy for this month. So this is Master of Poisons, which I've mentioned a couple times on my channel now that I've been excited about for a long time. And I think I haven't really done it justice before when I've mentioned it, um, because I hadn't really dug into it yet. So now I'm about, um, getting towards a third of the way through it. You can see my bookmark there and it is awesome so far. It's really, really cool. So I've mentioned before, um, I've kind of called this climate change fantasy and there's definitely a really strong element of that. So um, the world that the people live in is definitely changing in ways that, that we kind of recognize from climate change. In particular, they have deserts that are expanding, starting to take over. Um, formerly, former croplands are now turning into desert. And then there's a magical element that the desert, they call it poison sand. So it's not just desert. <laughs> it's much worse than that. Um, and kind of magical storms as well are becoming more frequent and are very unpredictable. Um, so it's kind of a climate change element and it is very clear from somewhat early on in the book that these changes have been driven by mismanagement of natural resources, which Hello, 2020. So um, I really like that aspect of it. And then the whole world is a, is a fantastical world. Um, what's really cool about this book is that the author, Andrea Harrison, draws quite a bit on African folklore um, and tradition, as well as I think there's some Native American elements in here as well. So she's kind of weaving that together um, to create the cultures um, in this book um, and some of the um, the folklore that's within this magical world. And it's just, it's incredibly well done. Um, the storytelling so far, like she can just pack so much in. I mean, you want to talk about detailed world building um, and like a detailed plot. Like there's just so much, but her writing is just so clear and so powerful. Um, it's very, uh, her writing is kind of short, if that makes sense. If you think about like a short tone, um, you know, it just, uh, there's not a lot of frills. Um, it's just, it's incredibly impactful and powerful. And so I'm loving that. So, so far in the book, we're following two points of view. Um, there's a character, uh, who in a very Games of Throne, Game of Thrones way um, is has been a counselor to um, the emperor of the um, the main kingdom in this book for a long time, for 20 years, and has been kind of trying to hold stuff together um, and make life better for a lot of the people that are kind of on the fringes of the dominant society. And he himself is actually from one of those peoples. Um, 
and, uh, you know, has just been struggling against some ineptitude in liter- leadership and some of the corruptness and aggression of the other people on the council council with him. So it's kind of like the council of the, the oh, I know, I don't remember what it's called in Game of Thrones. But anyway, there's that council politics level of thing that's, things that are going on. Um, and so there's major drama at that level um, with secret plots and secret missions. And I'm not going to give too much away, but if you like that sort of intrigue, there's a lot of that in here. So we follow that counselor's viewpoint, and he is the master of poisons. Um, that's his official title. Um, and then the other viewpoint that we follow is a young girl, Awa, um, I think at the point where I am in the story, she's 15, but I think we started following her when she was 12. And her parents have actually sold her, um, not into slavery, but they have sold her. They've sold her to a group called the Green Elders, who are kind of a um, nomadic, shamanic um, sort of group. Um, And she's learning how to be a storyteller um, and to use some specific kind of magical powers. In particular, she's able to walk into kind of the world of dreams and visions. Um, And so she's making some discoveries there. This Master of Poisons, where I am a third of the way into the book is starting to make some discoveries and put some things together with what's going on in their world with the climate change aspect. So just all getting very exciting. (laughs) So this is awesome. If you like fantasy, you should check this out. This book is great so far. Um, Anyway, I've talked about that for a lot. Okay, so uh, two other fiction books um, that I believe I've mentioned briefly before that I am reading this month, one of which I've already started, is The Death of um, Vivek Oji by uh, Akweke Amezi. And um, I'm reading that with the Red Under the Bed um, book club that's run by Scott and Nell over at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Um, So I will include a link to their announcement video about that, um, where there's a link to the Discord where we're discussing that book. Um, And that book is set in Nigeria, and we start out the book knowing that one of the main characters, Vivek Oji, is dead. Um, And so we we know he's dead. And then um, the rest of the book is exploring um, kind of the the background and the relationships in his life. So we're, we're learning a lot. I'm only a little bit into it. I'm like three chapters into it. So we're learning a lot about his family. And we're starting to see a lot about a very close relationship that develops between him and his cousin, um, who I think is another point of view in the book. Um, and so that one is just, uh, so far it, it has a literary feel. Um, it's just beautifully written and is just um, covering just that very, a uh, basic topic of family and friendship. Um, so I'm curious to see where that one goes. Um, and I'm reading that on my Kindle, which is why I'm not holding it up. Um, and then the other one I'm reading on my Kindle, I've mentioned before, I haven't started this one yet, but it's Pride by Ibiza Boy. And that is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. It's set in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and that one sounds really cool. The main character, the heroine, Zuri, is Afro-Latina. And um, her neighborhood in Brooklyn Brooklyn is undergoing gentrification. And so the family um, that includes the Darcy (laughs) character, um, I think as well as the Bingsley character, is a wealthy family that moves into the area. And so the pride aspect is kind of Zuri's pride in, you know, in her hood, the way it is. Um, And the prejudice aspect, I think, is going to be, um, or so, no, sorry. Now I'm getting confused because in the book description, it does reference her pride. Well, and we know from the actual Pride and Prejudice book, there's actually Pride and Prejudice on both sides with Elizabeth and Darcy. So anyway, so she's got some pride going on and is prejudiced against these wealthy people moving in. And um, I obviously haven't started reading yet, but we can kind of assume what the gentrifiers are like. (laughs) Um, So it's going to be about that tension as well. So it sounds like a really good modern retelling that brings modern issues um, to that plot scaffolding from Pride and Prejudice. So I'm excited about that one. And I'm reading that one as part of the Jane Austen uh, readathon that I'm doing this whole year called Down Memory Jane, um, which is run by Elena the Great and some other really great booktubers. And we have a Discord as well for that where we're discussing those selections. So I will include links um, below if you want to join in. Um, Great. All right. That's it for fiction. Moving on. Nonfiction. Um, So I have two books that were given to me by my lovely friend, Alex, um, my best friend, my sister. Um, and, uh, 
these, um, yeah, these have been sitting on my desk for like a month, so I need to read these. So one of them is All About Love, New Visions by Bell Hooks. Um, she and I read Communion together last fall and are still talking about it. And so this is kind of our continuing series, reading Bell Hooks's um, thoughts about love. Um, so Bell Hooks is a black feminist. Um, and so this whole book is kind of applying um, a feminist critique to our societal and cultural visions of love, interrogating why we're not taught how to love um, the best that we can, um, really arguing that, that we should be thinking of love as an act, a continuing act that is always ongoing and we can always be improving upon. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited uh, to read this one because those are lessons that I definitely always need reminders about and I'm sure I have a lot more to learn about how to love. Um, and then the other one that she gave me, so um, she is a marine scientist, a marine ecologist, um, and is uh, has found all of her inspiration in large marine mammals. Um, and so she sent me this book called Undrowned Black Feminist Lessons from Marine Mammals by Alexis Pauline Gums. Um, and so this is creative nonfiction. Um, and so it's a, a woman writing through a naturalist scientific lens and then also through a black feminist lens, thinking about what lessons we can learn from marine mammals and from marine mammal society and behavior to apply to our own lives. Um, so I think this will be really, really interesting. Um, I, I love creative nonfiction because I think it can really, uh, really push my boundaries for how I understand the world. Um, so I'm excited to read that. And then I'll just briefly mention these books that I've mentioned. Um, I think I mentioned these in my New Year's tag as priorities for the year. So I've decided to try to make sure I read them in February or at least get started. Um, so these are two books, one written by Brittany C. Cooper, and then she's one of the editors of the second one. Um, Brittany Cooper is a professor at Rutgers University um, and is, you know, really an expert in um in uh, critiquing race um, and, uh, and feminism. And so uh, this first book is Beyond Respectability, the Intellectual Thought of Race Women. Um, and it's a bit of a historic treatment about um, the rise of intellectual black women um, in our cultural and social thought. So let me just see. So yeah, she charts the development of African-American women as public intellectuals and the evolution of their thought from the end of the 1800s through the black power era of the 1970s. So. Go girl power. <laughs> I'm very excited um, to read this one. Um, and then this is a little bit different. As I mentioned, Dr. Brittany Cooper is an editor on this. This is an essay collection that resulted, um, I think, from a, a blog um, that was online for a long time. The, and this is the Crunk Feminist Collection. It's also edited by Susanna M. Morris and Robin M. Boylorn. Um, and it's just a collection of, uh, of essays that kind of sit at the intersection of blackness and feminism editing Beth Ann here. That was the, this is the second video where I've had my um, visual cut out, but not my audio. So I'm just um, going to refilm my final comments on the Crunk Feminist Collection and then wrap up. Um, so yeah, so I think some of these um, are also semi-autobiographical or maybe entirely autobiographical essays. Um, just in flipping through, I saw one that was about infertility, um, some that are about kind of reflecting on past relationships. So um, as someone who really likes memoir, I really like that aspect um, of this as well. So just a really good opportunity, I think, to hear, um, hear some profound stories and to learn a lot because I have a lot to learn. Um, and a lot of these essays look very short as well. So I like having um, that sort of book on my TBR as well as um, my other books just because um, these are the sorts of things I could just keep on my bedside table and maybe read one a night, something like that, um, when I just have 10 or 15 minutes when I'm trying to wind down. So really looking forward to this. Um, so that's uh, my February TBR, at least the books that I really want to prioritize. Um, I'm having a good reading month so far. Like I said, I'm really loving the Master of Poisons book. So that was a great way um, to start things off. I'm also really enjoying The Death of Vivek Oji, um, which uh, I'm getting a little nervous about since it does end up with a character's death. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but it's, it's beautiful. So with that, I will um, just say thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your reading. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Thanks. Bye.